Walt earned his mechanical engineering PhD from MIT. So that is an extraordinary accomplishment just to get a PhD from MIT. He was serving as an army ranger. Note the sleeve insignia, the army ranger lightning bolt. The leaf is gold, which signifies the rank of major. So in this photo, he was still Major Brown, not yet a full colonel. When we said earlier, try to Google this, and we saw how, how popular hydroplate theory was compared to catastrophic plate tectonics. Well, when Henry Morris mentioned Walt Brown among a, a few national ministries, it really is because of the impact and the influence that he's had is equivalent to a national ministry. I'll give you some examples by doing some Google searches to check out rankings. So this is rankings. If you Google, in quotes, origin of the Grand Canyon, Walt is number three out of 700,000 web pages, and that's been consistent for a long time. So, you know, it's hard to beat like Wikipedia or something like that, but three out of 700 thousand web pages. Oh, and CMI, which is one of the major groups, and I love them, they're number six. So those are the highest two creation sites. Origin of radioactivity. Now, I didn't put that in quotes because Walt's theory is the origin of Earth's radioactivity, but it also applies to radioactivity generally. And if you Google origin of radioactivity, Walt is number one out of over three million pages. If you add in origin of Earth's radioactivity, which is Walt's part of the hydroplate theory, very few people ask the question, how did radioactivity start on Earth? Because the atheists all assume that it came from supernovas billions of years ago. So they say, what is the origin of radioactivity? It's supernovas, heavy elements. But they don't say, what's the origin on Earth? Because they think the Earth came from stars exploding. The best-selling atheist authors, to me, seem... Well, they're all atheists, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know what you're talking about. They're all atheists. Uh, essentially, the first like, approximation all scientists are, yeah. Now, are you open to the possibility that Darwinism is false? What do you mean, Darwinism? <laughs> that is the way it goes, talking to evolutionists, atheists, pro-aborts. That's what it's like because they're afraid of the discussion. That's called obfuscation. So with all that, there was one point where Lawrence Krauss agreed with me that radioactivity and granitic crust go together, like hand and glove, like peanut butter and jelly, like Peyton Manning and the Broncos. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get that in there. I know. When you guys beat the Broncos, what was that, three weeks ago? Our favorite sign was somebody in the stands. It said, we love you, Peyton, just not tonight. <laughs> okay, so he agreed with me on this point on radioactivity, which he's so disagreeable, and he's a, a leading theoretical physicist in the world. He might be in the top ten, maybe, for popularity-wise. And so for him to agree is significant. So again, once again, you all right. No, you know, on this, I think I know very much what I'm talking about. Ninety percent of the Earth's radioactivity is in the crustal rock of the continents. That's a true statement. Okay. So finally, right? So why is it there? If those heavy elements were formed in supernova, Larry Krauss blasphemes Jesus Christ when he says. Forget Jesus, a star died so you could live. That's what he says. So forget Jesus, the stars died so that you could be here today. Okay? And, and anyway. He's great. Now, he's wrong even scientifically because this year, the journal Nature has published that we now know that supernovas can't create the heavy elements. Everything heavier than iron, which means... Most of the elements, they can't make them in supernovas. There's not enough energy. There's not enough temperature. There's not enough pressure. There's not enough neutrons. And they look at the light. They're not making 
heavy elements like they thought. We've all been told that stars explode and they make all the elements that are in our bodies. Well, they can only make the elements up to iron. So why are all those elements here? Chemical evolution cannot answer where do the heavy elements come from. The National Academy of Sciences, which is America's most prestigious body of atheistic Darwinist scientists, they publish their The 11 Greatest Questions for Physics just a few years ago. And question number four or five was, how did heavy elements form? They don't know. Wouldn't that be a shock to most people who watch the Discovery Channel and listen to Science Friday on NPR? They'd be shocked. They thought they figured it all out. Rate, heat problems, all by miracles, that's the claim, right? Yeah, but after the flood, the Earth wasn't just the right temperature, like a Goldilocks just right temperature. It was way too cold. Glaciers, millions of square miles of frozen muck called Los or Lers, the Ice Age. If God was going to remove the problem of the heat, well then why did he remove so much heat? He could have done it just perfectly. So the Bible doesn't say God gave a flood and then he gave an Ice Age to really punish mankind. No, he gave a flood. The Ice Age was a result of the consequences of the flood. After the flood, the world wasn't too hot, but too cold. So look for a flood model with processes that systematically remove heat. The vapor canopy theory, it doesn't remove heat. Catastrophic plate tectonics, it creates a lot of heat with the accelerated decay. It doesn't remove heat. The hydroplate theory removes heat. The fusion of heavy elements, when lightning creates heavier elements, this has been done in the lab by scientists thousands of times. They produce electric currents that are like lightning bolts, tremendously finely focused on a micro dot. And the temperature gets so hot, you know, we talk about the sun, how hot that is, this gets, in the laboratory, 640 million degrees for like a millionth of a second. And it produces, out of normal elements, like iron or gold or other elements, it produces uranium and thorium and polonium and radon and all the heavy elements. It produces all of them. They've been doing this thousands of times, and it's a stunning advance in nuclear physics to realize that when you have sufficient electrical current focused in a Z-pinch way, you create heavy elements. And not only do they create heavy elements, you know, in the Earth, there's a certain amount of this element, a certain amount of that element. There's 60 heavier elements, heavier than iron or so. Well, they produce those elements in the lab by accident in about the same proportions that they exist in the crust of the Earth. So that is just astounding evidence that those heavy radioactive elements came from the global flood and the electrical discharges in the crust during the flood. So fusion of heavier elements. Oh, by the way, when that happens, the whole lab should melt down, you know. But they say the process is adiabatic. The process, it doesn't melt down the equipment, it absorbs heat. Because when you make a uranium atom from smaller atoms, because their electrons are stripped away and the nucleus are pushed, squeezed together so tightly, it overcomes the Coulomb force that wants to shoot like particles apart, protons. Like you have an atom, two protons, two neutrons. Why doesn't it fly apart? It wants to by the electromagnetic Coulomb force, but the strong force holds it together. And when the atom nucleus becomes too big, it's real heavy, like uranium, the nucleus is so big that the strong force can't hold on to all the protons and the neutrons. The Coulomb force then, because the distance is so great, they measure it in barns, the distance is so great that the strong force loses hold 
of some protons and neutrons and they shoot out. And that's why we have radioactivity. So in lightning and in this Proton 21 laboratory, they focus this electrical current on pieces of iron or whatever they use. And as long as it's relatively pure, and they produce all these heavy elements. And they call it cold repacking because it takes energy to make those heavy elements. So in a nuclear power plant with fission, we are generating a lot of heat. If you're using fusion and you're building heavier elements by smashing atoms together, you are absorbing heat. So you take all that radioactive decay that the rate team and CPT thinks they have a problem with, and most of it went into the creation of Earth's radioactivity. The heavy elements were made with that heat energy. There's more to the story, of course, 